Well, today we are going to explore a shader technique which is called parallax occlusion mapping. This technique is used to add more depth to your texture beside normal map and without adding any extra geometry. Look at these walls. The wall on left hand side has only normal map and wall on right hand side has parallax occlusion mapping applied to it. Even if you look at this closely, you can see the brick which are in the front cover the brick which are behind them. And this is done all without adding new geometry. So how is it done? First, I explain how to do this in Godot because you can easily do that in Godot standard material. And then I will explain math behind this. Well, for this, you need a height map texture. I download this texture from Ambient CG and I put the download link in the description. So if you look at the download file of this brick texture, inside zip file, you can find a texture which is called a displacement, which you can use also for height map. After that, create a standard material and set albedo, normal map and roughness. And then in the height map section, enable height map. And here in the texture section, put your height map. In this case, I will put my brick displacement texture. As you can see, we have some changes, but it is not good enough. And now if I activate deep parallax, you can see we have a major change. But what are these parameters? So before I explain all of this to you, I should explain the concept behind parallax occlusion mapping. And I think if you want to work with this, it is much better to know how this thing works internally. So imagine this is our surface of mesh. And I look at my surface in front view. And this is the eye position or camera position. And now if I bring my height map to this space and I put it under my surface, it would look like this. Now normally when you look at this position, for example, your graphic card is going to take the UV coordinate at this position and according to that UV coordinate, it is going to take the pixel at this position and render that on your screen. But now what we are going to do is to draw an imaginary line and see where that line will intersect to our height map. Well, that intersect here. So we grab the UV coordinate of this position and here instead of using its original UV, we are going to draw the pixel at this UV coordinate. If you look at this image, you can see there are some points which will never intersect them at this view angle. And in the real world also, it is like this because you cannot see the points which are behind something. So I hope this was clear to you and up to this point, you understand that. Well, visually we can see where this line will intersect but how we can calculate it mathematically. Uh, so first of all, let's define our coordinate system. This is our surface normal. This is another vector which is parallel to our surface and I call this tangent. And there is another vector which is toward the screen, which I call that binormal and I cannot show that to you. So this space is called tangent space. Basically, each point on our mesh has a different tangent space, which is defined by its normal map on that point. And if we do all this calculation in tangent space, it would be much easier. Another important thing is that usually this tangent vector has the same direction to X component of our UV coordinate. And binormal has the same direction to Y component of our UV coordinate. This is really important. And later in this video, you will understand that. So now we go forward a step by a step and see where our line will intersect our height. This is the first step. As you can see, I extend my view vector and then I measure its depths like this. And similarly, on height map section, also I go forward one step in the X direction of UV and I measure depths also here. Now we check if the depth of our line is greater than the depth of our height map. So it is not. So we continue and let's see what will happen. So now our line depth is bigger than height map depth here. 
But as you can see, our line is not exactly on curve height. What we do now is to average between this position and previous position and calculate our UV in this way. But finally, we cannot calculate the exact location of intersection. But we can calculate a point closer to the intersection point by making a smaller step. So now that we learned the concept of this, let's take a look at a height map parameter again. So here we have mean layer, which is 8, and max layer, which is 32. So layer is the number of total steps. And for better optimization, when we look at top of our mesh, we set the number of step 8 times, which is defined in mean layer. And when we look parallel to surface of the mesh, we set the number of the step 32 which is defined in max layer. And when we are between these two, we put a number between mean layer and max layer. Other parameters are flip tangent and flip binormal. In case your tangent and binormal are not in the direction of your UV, you can flip them here, but now everything is working, so I won't touch them. There is another parameter which is called flip texture which will reverse the direction of the height map. I really suggest to not use really high resolution height map images. As you can see, we just approximately calculate the intersection point, And because of this inaccuracy, if you use height map texture with a lot of detail, you will have some artifact. For example, look at the wall on the left. This wall has 2K texture. And the wall on right hand side is 512 by 512. You can tell the difference. And please note this method is need enough processing power, especially when you set the layer number to a big number. So use this method with caution. And well, I hope you like this video. Until the next video, bye.